Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at volumes of solids that are sitting on a base that have known cross sections that are common geometric shapes. I'm going to show you what we're going to be doing. So let's say we have this base, this fixed circular base, and I'm going to tilt this just a little bit. So this is going to be the bottom of a solid. And the cross sections taken perpendicular to the x-axis are going to be squares. Here's four sample squares. And as you move from left to right, you can see that the squares would get larger. The largest one would be when we get to the diameter of the circle. And what we want to do is we want to find out the volume of this solid. Now the idea here is that we're going to find the area of one cross section and then we're going to integrate that between our limits of integration which will basically give us an infinite number of those and we're going to integrate that to find the total volume of the solid. So let's see what that would look like. This is a pretty funky little shape here. But if every single cross section perpendicular to the x-axis was a square, that's what it would look like. And so here's the solid and there's the four squares together and you can see we're trying to do an infinite number of them but it's hard to put that in there. Um, and that's going to be what we're doing today. We're trying to find the volume of a solid that's sitting on a base and the cross sections are known cross sections. What we're going to deal with today are going to be squares and equilateral triangles. Let me show you what equilateral triangles would look like. Uh, cross sections here perpendicular to the x-axis are equilateral triangles. We'll create the solid. This one obviously looks different. It's, these are all pretty cool pictures. And we'll show this solid with the uh, triangles in there. Here we would integrate one of these triangles between, in this instance it would be between negative r and r. We want to integrate the area of one of these triangles. The other, only other thing we're going to do today is uh, semicircles. So here is a base that's triangular, a triangular base, and we've got semicir semicircles, and you can see here these are cut perpendicular to the y-axis. If things are cut perpendicular to the y-axis, we're going to have to work in terms of y, and we did that yesterday, so that's not shocking. There's five semicircles. And so you can see that obviously the circles get smaller as we go through, but we would just integrate between y equals a, a to b or c to d or whatever it is. Here's our solid and five semicircles in there. So that's what we are going to try and find. The volume of a solid that's sitting on a, a region, on a base, and whose cross sections perpendicular to an axis are known geometric shapes. Don't need to save that, so off we go. Okay, so this is what you're looking at, and there's some examples there. And let me get my purple pen out here. All right, so if the cross sections are taken perpendicular to the x-axis, our volume is going to look like this. It's going to be the integral from A to B of the area of one cross section dx. And if the cross sections are taken perpendicular to the y-axis, I'm going to use C and D. And these are going to be y equals so these are limits in y, and this would be a of y dy. And if you want, you can go take a look at some of these pictures down here to see what we're doing. All right, so let's take a look at some examples and how we're going to do this. And today we're just going to set up these integrals. We're not actually going to answer them. So here I've got a base is bounded by the lines y equals x squared. That's actually a curve, but whatever. So I've got y equals x squared. It's really hard to draw a smooth curve with this. And we also have the straight line negative 2x plus 3. So that obviously goes through 3, and it has a negative slope. That's supposed to be a straight line. That probably didn't make it any better. Anyway, so here is our region. And cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are the following shapes. So we're going to take a cross section. We're just going to draw one of them here. Here is a cross section perpendicular to the x-axis. And it's supposed to be a rectangle of height 4. So we're supposed to have a rectangle. So here we would have rectangles coming through here. And the height is 4. And we have to figure out what is the width. Well, the width would be the distance top minus bottom. We practiced this yesterday. This distance, this base, is down here is top minus bottom. And you can see that the linear is the top function, so this would be top minus, and the quadratic is the bottom one. So top minus bottom gives us the base of our rectangle. And what we want to find is the area of this rectangle. That would be the area of one of them. And for our example, it would be base times height or length times width. It's negative 8x plus 12 
minus 4x squared. That's the area of this one rectangle. To get the volume, we would integrate that between these points of intersection. So we need to know where does x squared equal negative 2x plus 3. So we can do some algebra for that. x squared equals negative 2x plus 3. Bring everything on one side. And we can factor and solve. And we can see that that would be x plus 3 and x minus 1. So we would get x equals negative 3 and x equals positive 1. So those would be our limits of integration, negative 3 to 1 of the area of one cross-section, which we get negative 8x plus 12 minus 4x squared dx. The, the integral adds up an infinite number of these. We've learned that that's what that does. Now what if these cross-sections were semicircles? Well, semicircles would look like this. We saw an animation for that. And this diameter, again, is top minus bottom. So here the diameter is negative 2x plus 3 minus x squared. Now how do you find the area of a semicircle? Well your area of a semicircle is 1 half pi r squared. Now if you have a diameter, of course the 2 times the radius gives you the diameter, you're going to have to cut that in half to get your radius. So here would be my area of one cross section. That's going to be 1 half pi times the radius squared, but my radius is half of this, so that would be negative 2x plus 3 minus x squared over 2. There's my radius squared, so here's the area of a semicircle. My volume is going to equal the integral of this. Now, if these are semicircles between negative 3 and 1, our limits of integration stay negative 3 to 1, but we also have this property of integrals that says I can pull out a constant, and so I'm going to do that and pull the 1 half pi out in front. So it would be 1 half pi times the integral from negative 3 to 1 of r squared, so that would be negative 2x plus 3 minus x, is that an x squared? That is an x squared, x squared should have been right there, sorry about that. So we've got minus x squared over 2, and there's our r squared dx. So it's 1 half pi r squared, and the 1 half pi came out in front. All right, so what if they are equilateral triangles? Um, so here's our fancy little formula to find the area of an equilateral triangle. And I've got the circle x squared plus y squared equals 9. So that has a radius of 3. So off around we go, not too bad. And our cross-sections here are equilateral triangles. So let's solve this for y equals plus or minus the square root of 9 minus x squared. So what is this distance from here all the way down to here? So we can find our cross-section. Well, this upper hemisphere of the circle, this is the positive square root of 9 minus x squared. And the lowest hemisphere, or the lower hemisphere, is negative square roots of 9 minus x squared. So what is the total distance from top to bottom? Well, it's top minus bottom, and you can see that that total distance is two of these. So our base of our triangle is two square roots of nine minus x squared. Why is that two again? Top minus bottom. Square root of nine minus x squared minus negative square root of nine minus x squared. There's our side length. So the area of one cross section would be square root of 3 over 4 times 1 side squared. Now if you square this, you can just square the 4, sorry, square the 2 to get the 4, and when you square the square root of 9 minus x squared, you get 9 minus x squared. And then our force cancel, and so here's the area of one cross section. It's just square root of 3 times 9 minus x squared. So our volume is going to equal the integral from What's the radius of our circle? It's, we're, it's 3, so we're going from negative 3 to 3. I don't know why I'm struggling with writing those 3's there. So our volume is going to be negative 3 to 3 of the area of one cross section. Again, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I can pull the square root of 3 out in front of my integral. And that's just going to be 9 minus x squared dx. Let's do one last example where we have cross sections perpendicular to the y-axis. So here I've got y equals x squared. 
I also have y equals 0. Now, of course, we know that's just the x-axis, and x equals 2. So my region, oh, sorry about that. That's supposed to be a straight line. Okay, so my region is right in here. Now we're doing cross-sections perpendicular to the y-axis. So these are horizontal cross-sections, and that works out to be a square. So what we need to do is we need to work in terms of y. So we know if we take and square root both sides, we get x equals plus or minus the square root of y. Now since we're dealing with just these positive x's over here and positive y's, then this graph right here, this parabola, is x equals the square root of y. And we know this vertical line has equation x equals 2. So let's take a look at our square. Here's our square. What is the base of this square? Now when we work in y's, we know we do right minus left. So we do the right equation, which is the vertical line 2, minus the left equation is the square root of y. And since it's a square, the other side is exactly the same. So my area in terms of y is one side squared. And so my volume is going to equal the integral from, now keep in mind, these are not x values anymore. These are y values. So y ranges from 0 all the way up here to wherever they intersect. And wherever x squared, if, if you square 2, you get 4. So these graphs intersect up here at 2 comma 4. So we're going to let our cross sections range from y equals 0 all the way up to y equals 4. And we're going to do the area of our cross section, which is 2 minus the square root of y squared dy. So there you go, and I will see you guys tomorrow.